guys, happy Friday. Uh, it is me again, <laughs> I pop up every Fridays. Before I get started in this video, I really wanted to quickly direct you guys to two very important things. I know that next week you have your GAT and a lot of people don't care about the GAT and you know, they think they can't study for it and whatnot. And yes, I'm telling you, you don't need to study for it, but I'm going to link you guys to two of my videos just up above and down below in the description box too. I strongly encourage you to go and watch those because all you need to do is watch them to understand what exactly you need to do for the gap. And then you're pretty much going to be guaranteed to do a lot better than you would if you don't watch these two videos. And I know that because the tips that I have in there have helped so many people in the past and I know they're gonna help you too. So go ahead and watch those. If you're gonna be sitting the gap, which I assume you probably will be if you're in VCE, but otherwise, let's get started on 1984 and Stasiland. If you guys don't know already, 1984 is one of my favorite books. So this has definitely a special place in my heart. So the takeaway message of this video deals with differentiating between the books. When you look at 1984 and Stasiland, you might see a lot of similarities, but it's really important to look at the bigger picture and understand what exactly each author is painting. While Orwell portrays a crushing defeat of humanity at the hands of a regime, Funda, on the other hand, doesn't really say quite the same thing at all. So these texts are on one level similar, but on another level not similar at all. This is something that we will keep in mind as we go through this essay topic today. So a little background information to get us started. Orwell's cautionary novel 1984 tells the story of Winston, a citizen of the fictional totalitarian state of Oceania, governed by some entity called Big Brother. We watch him attempt to subvert but ultimately get caught out by the omnipotent and omniscient regime. Funder tells a very similar story in Stasiland, though this book is based in the real world and is what we might call literary non-fiction. This means she approaches it like a novel but draws deeply from the stories of real people from East Germany or the German Democratic Republic, a once real country. She explores their lingering memories of the regime after the reunification of Germany in 1989 and looks at the discrepancies between personal experience and official documentation of the era. The title Stasiland comes from the name for the secret police who spied on the citizens inside the GDR. They are known as the Stasi. Today's prompt is the following question. In Stasiland in 1984 respectively, how do Funda and Orwell portray the human spirit? You may notice here that since the topic is just a straightforward question, there is not many words to define here. The human spirit is pretty much the only term here that may need defining. It means the collective human sense of intellect, emotion, fear, passion, and creativity. And it refers to spiritual or mental aspects of humanity that run through everyone. The word that's actually supposed to prompt your thinking process is the word portray. The topic wants us to consider how the authors actually represent human fears slash emotions slash passions and so forth. You might want to ask, is the human spirit weak or powerful? Is it able to change over time? Can it be wounded? Can it be healed? And then the next step is to ask how you manage to answer those questions. What textual clues gave you those ideas? Those textual clues are the things you want to explore in this essay. In general, any prompt that asks how authors portray ideas or explore ideas should follow a similar thought process. Now, let's get into some possible paragraphs. One, both texts show that the human spirit can be malleable and breakable. Two, additionally, both texts agree that human spirit is strengthened by numbers. Three, however, 1984 demonstrates that the human spirit, when broken, is beyond repair. For Meanwhile, Stasiland admires its heroes for transcending their pain. Remember that the key message here is even though the texts do share similar components, they might not agree on everything. Paragraph 1. The human spirit can be molded or broken. In both texts, we see regimes manipulating and disciplining their denizens. In Orwell's Oceana, society has been rendered greyish and emotionless, and the will of the people has been reduced to virtually nothing. 
Without dignity of emotion, nor deep or complex sorrows, the human spirit is stunted and weakened, unable to feel shades of passion or emotion. The regime has simply deleted these elements of human nature. In Stasi land, Funda speaks to many people who have been disciplined because of the regime. This may refer to the actual punishment faced by people like Miriam, who was traumatized and left with strange little ticks, or for a poor, out of whom the regime made a criminal. However, the discipline may also refer to the pervasive surveillance of the Stasi, to the point where everyone suspected everyone else, and the mistrust this bred was the foundation of social existence. Discipline could even refer to the fact that the memory of the GDR has been molded such that it is remembered through rose-tinted lenses, with a sense of nostalgia or nostalgia for the East. I could go on forever, but any of these points demonstrates the fluidity of the human spirit. Paragraph two, human spirit can find strength in numbers. Where the human spirit has been weakened, however, individuals find comfort in other like-minded people. We see that in 1984, Winston's rebellion is made possible by the boldness he gets from feeling that Julia and O'Brien are on his side. Even in Stasiland, Fighting against structural issues in society is something that takes numbers to do. While the rest of Germany is keen to move on, to ignore the traumas of the victims, people like Frau Paul must fight to be heard. While the main story is set in 1986, we return to her in 2000, where she has joined an organization of victims who aim to speak out about the crimes of the Stasi. Even when the ex-Stasi man stalked her in a Volvo, Funda observes that her resolve is steely that she has found courage in others. Paragraph three, Orwell suggests that the human spirit cannot recover once broken. In 1984, the overall message is a pessimistic one. Though characters like Frau Paul in Stasiland are able to find some strength, Orwell portrays an omnipotent regime that is capable of totally crushing its victims. As soon as they're caught, Winston and Julia are separated, interrogated, and brainwashed into confessing. I always find that one of the most chilling lines in the novel is, you will be hollow, we shall squeeze you empty, and then we shall fill you with ourselves. And the regime is successful. It instills loyalty and love for Big Brother in both people, indicating that their rebellious spirit and human will has truly been vanquished. Paragraph four, Funda suggests that the human spirit is capable of overcoming hardship. She tells a slightly more optimistic tale in Stasiland. Many of her characters who have experienced hardships under the GDR have developed their own coping mechanisms to cope with the past. She actually foreshadows this at the start of the book where she talks about Sticklebrook, words such as, I'm not even gonna try this one, meaning manner of dealing with the past. We see this idea being developed and realized towards the end of the book, as by 2000, the victims she had interviewed have developed new lives for themselves. Julia, for instance, has left Germany behind for America, and we hear that she's participating in Reclaim the Night Marches, thereby converting the traumas of her past into social action for the future. Funda also admires Miriam's ability to cope, portraying her as an angel in her white and light and comfortable new home. She opens and closes the book with her story, I really because she has quietly overcome the most. As you can see here, the structure of this essay doesn't necessarily include both texts in each paragraph. However, this allows us to break down the similarities and differences of the text in a more layered way starting finally with the characters and plot points before zooming out to the overall message of the text. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, then I'd really appreciate you writing down in the comments, what did you find helpful? Because this will help me shape better videos for you guys in the future. Wanted to shout out to Mark once again for helping me write up this script. He's been helping me with quite a few of these VCE texts. And lastly, just a reminder to go and check out those gap videos because I really want to be able to help you guys wherever I can. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, this weekend is my birthday. So I'll be off enjoying the long weekend and I hope you guys enjoy the long weekend too. It's not too long until the end of term two. So keep fighting and we'll be there really shortly. See you guys soon. Bye.